Welcome to a new video from Metrum Germany. My name is Sandra Haug and in this video I will talk about compliance voltage and its importance in electrosynthesis and electrolysis applications. Now a quick summary what I will talk about in this video. First I will explain what compliance voltage is and why it is such an important parameter. Then I will present the most common used electrode setups, the two and the three electrode setup and the impact of separators and diaphragms on compliance voltage in dimension setups. To explain this in more detail, we will run two measurements in a three electrode setup. At the end, I will explain how to choose the proper potential stat for electrolysis and electrosynthesis applications in R&D. Now let's start with the first slides. So what is compliance voltage? To start a reaction in a potentiostatic electrolysis experiment, it is necessary to apply voltage between two electrodes with a potentiostat. When considering the classical water splitting experiment, we can see the IV curve that at lower voltages no reaction occurs. If the voltage is increased continuously, the Faraday current evolves at certain potential. This voltage is called decomposition voltage. The potential, which is applied between the electrodes, is called compliance voltage. To run electrolysis applications, it is always necessary that the applied compliance voltage is higher than the decomposition voltage. Depending on the experiment, this can be a quite high voltage and could push the potential start to its limits. An electrolysis cell consisting of two electrodes is run in the so-called two-electrode setup and the cell itself can be described by electronic components. On the right side you can see the working electrode, on the left side the counter electrode is displayed. If an oxidation is occurring at the working electrode, a reduction is taking place at the counter electrode. Both electrodes can be described with an RC element. The resistances our pole represent the kinetics of the charge transfer reactions. The better the kinetics, the lower its value. The capacitances, CDL, represent the double layer characteristics of each electrode. You can clearly see that the highest voltage drop occurs at the electrode interface. From the working electrode and from the counter electrode. And please be aware that mass transport is neglected in these diagrams. The electrolyte between the electrodes can also be described by a resistance. The better the conductivity, the lower the resistance. The compliance voltage needs to be applied between the two electrodes and it consists of the sum of all voltage drops across the cell. Unfortunately, with this setup, it is just possible to determine the total cell resistance and not each reaction separately. There is no information available about the electrode kinetics of each individual electrode. If each electrode and its reaction needs to be measured separately, a three electrode setup is used. In the three electrode setup, an additional electrode, the reference electrode, is used in the cell. Now it is possible to determine the potentials of the working and counter electrode with respect to the reference electrode individually. Therefore, it is possible to determine the polarization resistance and reaction kinetics of each electrode separately. This is quite important for electrolysis applications. If a certain set potential needs to be applied at the working electrode, the compliance voltage between working and counter electrode is adjusted until the set potential is reached. Now I will explain the working principle of a potential stat and how a defined set potential is applied to the working electrode. The voltage is displayed on the y-axis and each label represents an electrode. The working electrode, the reference electrode and the counter electrode. The most common operation principle of a potential stat keeps the working electrode on ground, on earth potential. And the active element of the potential stat is the counter electrode. Before applying actively a voltage there are reactions taking place at the electrodes 
and therefore the so-called open circuit potential between working and reference electrode and reference and counter electrode build up. In our experiment we want to apply a voltage of 0.7 volts. That means the potential start needs to apply the voltage between working and counter electrode actively. And now I want to explain how it works. So my left arm will be the control amplifier. He will take control of the counter electrode and he applies the compliance voltage between working and counter electrode. Now we still need to raise the voltage and you see now we reach the potential between reference and working electrode. And you also realize that the compliance voltage between working and counter electrode has to be much higher than this 0.7 volts. And this is the way the potential that works. It controls the counter electrode and according to the flowing current through the cell the potential adapts between the reference and the working electrode. And you also realize my arm is the potential stud and now I reach the limit. So the higher the compliance voltage of a potential stud, the better he can control the potential between the working and the reference electrode. For electrosynthesis and electrolysis applications, the cell is divided in two compartments to avoid mixing of the reaction products. In lab experiments, very often a glass frit is used as separator. It is cheap and easy to clean. This setup we will use later on in our experiments. The first measurement will be without separator. The second measurement will be with separator. By using this separator, an additional resistance is brought into the cell. The movement of ions is hindered, which causes an additional voltage drop in the cell. To keep the cell voltage between working and reference electrode, the potential start needs to apply a higher compliance voltage, increased by delta V. Later on, we will run two measurements, which will show the impact of the separator on the compliance voltage. As potential start for the measurement, we will use Vionic. I chose this potential start because it can apply high compliance voltages even at high currents. This specification is shown in the power plot. Let's have a closer look. In the power plot, the compliance voltage of the instrument is plotted versus current. A potential start can either deliver power or it can dissipate the power delivered by the cell. These different modes are represented by the four quadrants. In quadrant 1 and 3, the power is positive, which means that energy is brought into a passive cell. Typical examples are electrolysis and electrosynthesis cells. In quadrant 2 and 4, the power is negative, which means that the energy is taken out of the cell. Typical examples are batteries or fuel cells. For our measurement, we will stay in the first quadrant because we will use a passive cell doing electrolysis. The potential stat bionic, which we will use, can be set in two different operating modes. The first one is framed in green. It is the most common used operation mode because most electrochemical experiments can be performed with this operation mode. The maximum operation point is plus 10 volt compliance voltage at maximum current of 6 amps. The second operating mode is framed in dark blue. This is the high compliance mode. It is used when a compliance mode above 10 volt is needed. The maximum operation point is plus 50 volt compliance voltage at the maximum current of 3 amps. This is sufficient for demanding experiments in the field of organic electrosynthesis. Now we will switch to the experimental part of the video.
Before starting the experiment, let's have a closer look at the setup. We will use Vionic as potential stud. It is controlled by the software Intello and it is connected to the electrochemical cell. The cell consists of three electrodes. Let's have a closer look at the electrodes. We have three electrodes. The working electrode is this platinum sheet electrode. Here we will generate the oxygen later on. And here is the counter electrode. It's a platinum mesh. You can see this is an outer one and the inner one platinum mesh. They are separated by the glass frit. And the last electrode, this is the reference electrode. The potential is always measured between the reference electrode and the working electrode or between the reference electrode and the counter electrodes. For the first experiment we will use the, the outer platinum mesh and for the second experiment we will use the inner platinum mesh so this will be the measurement with the separator. Let's start the experiment without separator. A current of plus 100 milliamp is applied to the working electrode. The positive current leads to an oxidation at the working electrode, which generates oxygen at the platinum sheet electrode, and hydrogen is formed at the outer platinum mesh counter electrode. The potential of the working electrode with respect to the reference electrode is plotted in blue. The orange curve shows the potential of the counter electrode with respect to the reference electrode. As you can see, the potential difference between working electrode and reference electrode is much higher than the potential difference between counter electrode and reference electrode. What's the reason? The reason is the area. The area of the counter electrode is much higher than the area of the working electrode. The bigger surface of the counter electrode enables a much better mass transport. In this experiment, we are using the platinum mesh as counter electrode, which is separated by the glass frit. Again, a current of plus 100 milliamps is applied, and now the hydrogen evolution occurs at the inner platinum mesh. The potential of the working electrode with respect to the reference electrode is plotted in purple and the green curve shows the potential of the counter electrode with respect to the reference electrode. It's clearly visible that the potential of the counter electrode is significantly influenced by the glass frit. The value is much more negative compared to the previous experiment where the glass frit was missing. Let's summarize. To keep the current of plus 100 milliamp constant at the working electrode, a much higher compliance voltage is needed due to the potential drop at the separator. Let's have a closer look at the data. On the left side the measurement without separator is displayed and on the right side you can see the measurement with the separator. As already mentioned, the voltage difference between working and counter electrode is called compliance voltage. It is controlled by the potentiostat to keep the plus 100 milliamps constant at the working electrode. The compliance voltage had to be increased from 6 volt to 12 volts due to the glass frit. In our experiment, we used a good conducting electrolyte and the frit had a high porosity. If we would use a less porous frit, the compliance voltage could easily reach values higher than 15 volts. Besides separators, also other factors can require high compliance voltages. For instance, the use of non aqueous electrolytes in electrosynthesis. Typically, their conductivity is quite low. All geometric factors of the cell, like the distance between the electrodes and differences in electrode area. These points pose increased requirements on the potency stud, especially for instruments used in electrolysis or electrosynthesis. Of course, a high compliance voltage needs to be applied at high current densities. With the second sense line, the potential of the counter electrode can be measured. 
This enables the analysis of the electrode processes on both working and counter electrode. A high current range is needed because current densities higher than 1 amp per square centimeters are aimed. If the experiment is running out of control, the measurement has to be stopped either automatically or manually. It can happen that the cell or one of its electrodes are connected to ground, like supply lines. For such applications, the potentiostat needs to run in floating mode. Impedance spectroscopy is used quite often for electrode and cell characterization. It's important that the used potentiostat can apply frequency in the megahertz range, especially when measurements on solid state electrodes are needed. With the second sense line, the impedance of the counter and working electrode can be measured at the same time. Sampling of charge is needed. This enables a direct calculation of the reaction rate and efficiency. It's also quite comfortable when charge can be plotted directly. To show how the suitable potentiostat is chosen for electrolysis and electrosynthesis experiments, I compare two instruments from our product portfolio, the PGSTAT128N with the Vionic according to their specifications. There are three main advantages of Vionic at first glance. Plus minus 50 volt compliance voltage, 6 amp maximum current and the maximum frequency of 10 MHz cover a wide range of applications. To conclude, Vionic fits much better to electrolysis and electrosynthesis applications than the PGSTAT128N. Why is it recommended to use Vionic? Here you can see the benefits in detail. Efficiency and flexibility. With the software Intello, the user can program the procedures he needs. It's possible to make methods much more efficient and time-saving. Automatic calculations within the software are possible, especially when many users are using the same equipment with many methods, the database needs to be intuitive and powerful. Vionic is network compatible. For instance, users can access long-term measurements location independent. Performance. Vionic is a very powerful instrument and especially its high compliance voltage at high current is unique. If floating is needed, there are three modes where the user can choose, so grounding issues will not become a problem. With Vionic, impedance measurements on both electrodes, counter and working electrode, are possible. This saves time when doing measurements in complete cell setups. Safety. There are several software and hardware features to protect damage of electrodes and cells. Very useful is the internal memory of Vionic. Even if the connection of the PC is lost, Vionic can store up to 10 million data points internally, which will be sent to the software after reconnecting the computer. Well, this brings me to the end of this video. Now you know what compliance voltage is, how the cell setup influences the compliance voltage, and which specifications a potential stat should have to be suitable for electrolysis and electrosynthesis applications in R&D. Please send your questions to sandro.haug at metrum.de. You can find more information about electrochemical applications in the application finder on our website or on our blog Analyze This. See you soon!